It is a once in a lifetime kind of experience. It's an opportunity to travel into a, a different world. I mean, there's laughter, there's singing, there's dancing. It is a seven course, four hour, fully costumed, musical, comedic dinner theater pageant. If the show did not take place here, it would not be the show it is. It can't happen anywhere else. It can only happen in this gorgeous hotel, in this gorgeous place. And the doors just swing open. And there's the entire hall laid out in front of you. It's all lit by candle. It's such a gorgeous historic space. And with the scenery of Yosemite Valley just outside those windows, we don't have to worry about making this a beautiful space. It's magic already. National Park Service pageant master. His name was Garnet Holm. He wrote this pageant. It's based on an 1819 book from the author Washington Irving. They scrambled for who was going to be the jester that first year, and they did find a local photographer, uh, Ansel Adams. I learned that Ansel Adams had this part in the very beginning. It kind of blows my mind. That's just really, really special. Ansel Adams, for 45 years, was director of the Race Bridge. When Ansel Adams was ready to retire, he chose Eugene Fulton. Eugene was a different personality than Ansel. I think he was very much directed to the music, how the music was performed, and of course he had his wife, Anna Marie. Eugene Fulton passed away before the Christmas Eve dinner. His daughter is Andrea Fulton, and she had her first experience in Bracebridge at five years old. I was uh, an extra in the show, one of the little villagers, and to me it was the greatest excitement in the whole world to be able to get dressed up in that costume. And little did I know at that point, when I was five years old, that 65 years later I would be doing the same thing, directing, producing, and playing the lead role in the show. You're gonna go have an eight course dinner, everybody dressed to the nines. I mean, it's an event. And then on top of that, you throw in the show. Every course has a scene to go with it. Every course, the fish, the peacock pie, the boar's head and the bear and the beef. The amount of time and coordination and space that it takes to plate 300 plates, have them all be hot and prepared at the same time, and have it timed to the minute, is really spectacular. For the guests who attend Bracebridge, it's a magical experience for them because they come in, the hotel's all decked out for the holidays, they can see the performers rehearsing. And if you happen to stay at the lodge, you will probably hear high seas wafting through the air. I bring up a total of 105 people each year, the singers and the actors and the crew. The people we see and work with every day become our Christmas family. You've got people that work for professional opera companies. You've got people that are professional musicians. There's an arch downstairs. That is the dining hall entrance. That is the starting point for the cast. So when they hit that arch, that is their moment to go. Just a gorgeous candlelit procession. All of our beautifully costumed performers uh, taking us the long, slow walk up that carpet, holding candles, singing as they go, and arriving up at this brilliant, sparkling stage. Uh, Andrea comes up behind them and like steps in to conduct the chorus. It's just a magical, beautiful moment. really couldn't do it without all the people in the valley here. They're just, they treat us wonderfully. They really are the manpower that helps this show happen. Park rangers, the kids of the park, will come in and be forest folk. Same thing for the servitors and the litter bears and all those guys. We all create this special moment, all of us together, the audience included, that goes away right after we're done. And all we're left is the after effects, the magic, the glow. That matters. 
One of the biggest compliments someone can give us as they're walking out of Bracebridge Hall is, I can't wait to come back and see it again. To see the faces of the audience when they come out afterwards, I mean, they've been in there a long time and the energy is still so high and they're still so bubbly and just, they've enjoyed themselves so much. The seasons have now come full circle. The valley is blanketed with white. We assemble in convivial mood to revel, yet as well to pay tribute to nature's own tradition. The giving of the holly and how the holly, you know, symbolizes the renewal and the, and the constancy, that to me is profoundly and deeply moving and that is also a metaphor for this group. It's just a renewal and a constancy for however long we're blessed to be here and do this.